Welcome to our September 11th commemoration ceremony. I'd like to thank everyone for attending this important event and extend my deepest gratitude to our board member, alumnus Jim McCann, the FDNY, the NYPD, and all of our community members and partners who devoted their time and energy to produce this virtual remembrance. In spite of this pandemic and our remote existence, we can come together today to pay tribute to our John Jay family members who lost their lives during the horrific attacks on September 11, 2001. On that day, nearly 3,000 people died, including 343 firefighters and paramedics, 23 police officers, 37 Port Authority officers, and countless civilians. As a community, we reflect on their bravery and we reaffirm our commitment to serving others. The 67 John Jay community members that were lost on September 11th were just like us in so many ways. They were mothers, fathers, sons, daughters, brothers and sisters who were all committed to helping others. Our world was irrevocably changed the day we lost them but the impact of their service will be forever etched in our collective memory. As we honor the fallen and reflect on the importance of their lives today, we remember the outpouring of compassion that occurred in the aftermath of the attacks. People from across the country and around the world came to New York City to offer their help. Thousands of first responders and civilian volunteers who worked at Ground Zero were then exposed to toxic fumes. Now they're experiencing long-term health problems, which make them considerably more vulnerable to our most recent national crisis, the novel coronavirus. But it's within our darkest days that we truly discover our strength, our unity, and a light that can never be dimmed. Throughout this pandemic, every time I hear people applauding our first responders during the 7 p.m. cheer, I'm reminded of how we came together after September 11th and supported each other. Many of our students gathered with us today won't remember the tragic events on September 11th, or they may not have even been born yet. But let us say this to you, as members of our John Jay family, you're connected to the 67 heroes we lost that day. You're carrying on their brave legacy in everything you do. Every time you stand up for justice, every time you help those in need, every time you try to make the world a safer, better, and more just place, you are honoring their memory.
I'm Dick Pusateri, the Military and Veteran Services Manager. Our vital remembrance of September 11, 2001 also reminds us of our John Jay community's highest commitments. In our nation's military, we train young Americans to run to the sound of the gun, to run toward danger, to protect their brothers and sisters, and to complete their critical mission. Most of the 67 John Jay family members who sacrificed their lives on 9-11 and the many other responders who succumbed to illness since also are those who selflessly ran to the sound of danger on that horrible day to save others. After 9-11, there were many in our John Jay community who volunteered to serve our country in the military, law enforcement, and national security roles, with some making the ultimate sacrifice. The 67 John Jay family members whose names are etched on our 9-11 memorial and the many whose deaths followed represent the best of John Jay, our commitment to the safety and security of others and our willingness to risk ourselves to go into harm's way to protect others. In humble response to these sacrifices, our students and our college community take part in many remembrance activities. John Jay members are encouraged to perform acts of kindness and justice in remembrance of 9-11 through the I Pledge campaign. We normally plant more than 3,000 American, international, and John Jay flags on our jaywalk in honor of the innocent lives lost in the terrorist attacks. Other 9-11 activities include packing thousands of meals on and off campus and giving to the community by beautifying DeWitt Clinton Park. Today, we recall those traditions and reaffirm our commitments as we listen to student voices. The Four Candles. The Four Candles burned slowly. Their ambiance was so soft you could hear them speak. The first candle said, I am peace, but these days nobody wants to keep me lit. Then peace's flame slowly diminishes and goes out completely. The second candle said, I am faith, but these days I am no longer indispensable. Then faith's flame slowly diminishes and goes out completely. Sadly, the third candle speaks. I am love, and I haven't the strength to stay lit any longer. People put me aside and don't understand my importance. They even forget to love those who are nearest to them. Waiting no longer, love goes out completely. Suddenly, a child enters the room and sees the three candles no longer burning. The child begins to cry. Why are you not burning? You are supposed to stay lit until the end. Then the fourth candle speaks gently to the little child. Don't be afraid, for I am hope. And while I still burn, we can relight the other candles. With shining eyes, the child took the candle of hope and lit the other three candles. Never let the flame of hope go out of your life. With hope, no matter how bad things look and are, peace, faith, and love can shine brightly in our lives. We remember the members of the John Jay College community we lost in 9-11 and in the aftermath. Remembrance is not only about sadness, it is about honor to the fallen and acknowledgement that their influence and spirit will continue to direct our thoughts and deeds towards lofty purposes. May the light of this candle transform darkness and sorrow into a beacon of hope and remind us of the strength of human spirit, civility, and kindness. The candle of resiliency represents strength and power. The victims and survivors of 9-11 were courageous. Our community today is also courageous in confronting our fears, as well as disrupting biases, stereotypes, and discrimination, and in seeking to overcome obstacles to persevere. This candle represents John Jay. We educate and empower fierce advocates for justice. Students, faculty, staff, and alumni work each day for a more just society, advancing compassion, dignity, and respect, and creating an environment that offers every individual an equal opportunity to flourish. According to the Japanese tradition, folding 1,000 paper cranes gives you a chance to have one special wish come true. In some variations of the tradition, you may be granted happiness and eternal good luck instead of just one wish, such as long life or recovery from illness or injury. The crane is an auspicious creature in Japanese folklore. The crane is said to live for 1,000 years, the significance behind the quantity you need to fold. Some believe that one person must fold 1,000 cranes within one year in order to get the blessings of that wish. Following September 11, 2001, Japanese children hand folded 1,000 paper cranes as a gift to New York City based on the ancient legend. Given our mission and the impact of 9-11 on our community, 
John Jay College was also presented with hundreds of paper origami cranes, meticulously folded by a Japanese youth dance troupe. Their wish was for world peace and a just society. Each year, John Jay adorns our memorial with those paper cranes in tribute to our fallen comrades and in the spirit of peace and harmony. I'm so happy to be here speaking to you about the work of John Jay scholars in response to the 9-11 attacks. Following 9-11, John Jay scholars responded quickly, contributing their expertise and experience by serving as advisors, engaging in research, and providing recommendations to improve the systems we have in place to respond to such an emergency. For example, John Jay established a number of important programs and applied research centers. The Christian Reagan-Hard Center for Emergency Response Studies was established in response to 9-11 and serves to provide recommendations and research in emergency response to professionals. And John Jay College's Center on Terrorism was founded to help better understand the actors associated with terrorism and the ways in which they function around the globe. In addition to formal centers and programs, Individual faculty and, and students have contributed to our understanding of 9-11. My colleagues have published reports, authored books, written poetry, and hosted art exhibitions focused on the impacts and response to 9-11. And some have made an incredible sacrifice. For example, Dr. Cheryl Williams, a John Jay College professor of psychology, provided counseling and support immediately to individuals working at Ground Zero and at other sites around the city, without any thought that she too would later fall victim to illness from the site. My colleagues have continued to influence public policy and practice in public health and environment, human rights, homeland security, terrorism and counterterrorism, emergency management, fire science, and other areas. Many of these activities were initiated to honor the sacrifice and service of those who died on 9-11 and those who worked at Ground Zero. And these efforts speak to the college's unique mission of educating for justice and the character of her faculty, staff, and students who recognize that they have a continued call to action. As we reflect upon this anniversary and hear from others at the college, I hope that these stories inspire you as much as they have me. Thank you. As a special agent with the FBI and a member of the New York office dive team, I was actually supposed to be doing a dive job in the Midwest on September 11th, 2001. But since I had a graduate class at John Jay that night, I decided I would wait and meet the team on the 12th. Hearing the first plane hit the North Tower and the second one hit the South Tower, I responded to the scene along with my squad mates and a lot of other emergency personnel. It was overwhelming. The noise, the smell, the sight of the burning buildings, people jumping from the buildings. There was paper everywhere. We were maybe a quarter block away from the towers. It's hard to remember when it started to tilt and fall over. I was in total sensory overload and it took my partner screaming that the building was falling and to run to move me into action. My squad mates and I took off. Uh, we still refer to each other as New York's fastest. The next months are a blur, collecting airplane parts downtown, covering leads that came in, spending weeks sifting through body parts at the morgue. The number of dead is still hard for me to comprehend, uh, and that number keeps growing as people succumb to 9-11 related illnesses. I remember driving down the West Side Highway, which was lined on either side with people cheering, holding signs, handing out bottles of water to people that were going down to work at the site. There were signs with eagles, American flags, and USA written everywhere. In those brief moments, it felt like the country was united. As sad as the reason was for it, I wish I could see it united like that again. The Sala Stone. All of us here today are working to move a hill, stone by stone. Some of us are just beginning our journey, while others have been working to move this hill for some time. Every time we remember a fallen friend or loved one, when we reach out to others in pain, 
and when we work to improve society or live with hope for the future, we have successfully moved a pebble or a stone. There is an often told story in the Far East about a grandfather who, each day of his life, rose early, climbed to the top of the nearby hill that blocked the early morning sunlight, picked up a small stone, walked back down the hill, and placed the pebble on the other side of the stream near his home. His grandson often joined him in this effort. Why do we do this? The grandson asked. As long as you continue to do this and teach your children and their children to carry the pebbles, the grandfather promised, we're going to move this hill. The grandson persisted, but grandfather, you'll never see the hill moved. The man nodded, but yes, but I know that someday it will be moved. When you're feeling discouraged, remember the story of the grandfather who, pebble by pebble and stone by stone, was moving a hill. In every pebble you move, you bring honor to our college community and to your family. You also honor the legacy of those who have passed. Please convey this story to your family and friends. Together as a community, we will continue to move the hill and see the sunlight behind it. We now come to a very poignant segment in our program. My name is Maria Volpe. I'm a professor of sociology, director of the Dispute Resolution Program, and director of the CUNY Dispute Resolution Center at John Jay College. Each year, it is our tradition to invite representatives of the John Jay College community to recite the names of those we lost on September 11, 2001 and a way for us to recognize the 67 alumni and faculty who we lost on that tragic day. This year, we have asked our students, our future leaders who are athletes, members of Apple Corps and ACE, veterans and members of various clubs to read the names. In the past, when the names of our fallen community members were recited, a votive was lit for each one by a current student and placed around the memorial in tribute. The ceremony was held in Memorial Hall where a twisted beam from the North Tower of the World Trade Center is the centerpiece of John Jay's 9-11 memorial sculpture. The names of John Jay alumni and faculty being honored are etched on the granite lunation or outer pathway which was designed by Skidmore, Owing, and Merrill Architects. The inscription reads, dedicated in memory of those from the John Jay College community who lost their lives on September 11, 2001. As we listen to our students reciting the names of our fallen heroes, 
We ask everyone to reflect upon lives lost and the contributions they made. By doing so, we ensure that they are not forgotten and that their memories will continue to be a part of our college community and their families. Ignatius Adanga, the New York Metropolitan Transportation Council. Brian Ahern, FDNY. Gerard Barbara, FDNY. Frank Bonomo, FDNY. Michael Boyle, FDNY. Michael Brennan, FDNY. Peter Brennan, FDNY. Patrick Brown, FDNY. Ronald Buka, FDNY. William Berkey Jr., FDNY. Michael Camarata, FDNY. Michael Carl, FDNY. Vernon Cherry, FDNY. Michael Clark, FDNY. John Collins, FDNY. John Coughlin, NYPD. James Coyle, FDNY. Robert Crawford, FDNY. Scott Davidson, FDNY. Dennis Devlin, FDNY. Jerome Dominiquez, NYPD. Kevin Donnelly, FDNY. Steven Driscoll, FDNY. Gerard Duffy, FDNY. Fanny Espinoza, Cantor Fitzgerald. Michael Esposito, FDNY. Robert Evans, FDNY. John Fanning, FDNY. Thomas Farina, FDNY. Terrence Farrell, FDNY. Andrew Fredericks, FDNY. Thomas Gambino Jr., FDNY. Marlon Garcia, Marsh and McLennan. Edward Girardi, FDNY. John Giordano, FDNY. Sean Hanley, FDNY. Terrence Hatton, FDNY. John Heffernan, FDNY. Ronnie Henderson, FDNY. Walter Hines. FDNY. Carl Joseph, FDNY. Michael Kiefer, FDNY. Thomas Kennedy, FDNY. Ronald Kerwin, FDNY. Michael Lyons, FDNY. Joseph Levy, FDNY. Joseph Maloney, FDNY. Peter Martin, FDNY. Robert McMahon, FDNY. Charles Mills, the New York State Department of Taxation and Finance. Robert Manera, FDNY. Dennis Mojica, FDNY. John Moran, FDNY. Robert Nagel. FDNY. William O'Keefe, FDNY. Oreo Palmer, FDNY. Philip S. Petty, FDNY. Maria Ramirez, Langan Engineering and Environmental Services. Digna Rivera Costanza, Marsh and McLennan. Jacqueline P. Sanchez, Antor Fitzgerald. Leo Smith Jr., FDNY. Kevin Smith, FDNY. Walwyn Stewart, the Port Authority of New York and New Jersey. Santos Valentin, NYPD. John Vigiano, FDNY. Lawrence Virgil, FDNY. Edward White, FDNY.
My name is Glenn Corbin, Associate Professor of Fire Science at John Jay College. In the immediate aftermath of 9-11, my colleagues and I realized that the disaster at Ground Zero was going to generate large numbers of lessons um, and information for future emergency responses. But first, we had to study what happened there, what happened at Ground Zero. We had to understand how all the agencies came together to respond to the disaster, what worked well, what didn't work well what changes perhaps we need to building codes, emergency response protocols, emergency communications, all those kind of things. We wanted to know what happened at Ground Zero. Within a few weeks of, of the uh, disaster, we were contacted by Sally Regenhardt. Sally actually lost her son, Christian, a fire, probationary firefighter at Ground Zero on 9-11. She wanted to know what happened as well. And so we got together with Sally, uh, and my colleagues and I got together and decided that a wonderful memorial to her son would be the creation of a center that would study emergency responses. And so we created the Christian Regenhard Center for Emergency Response Studies. The uh, center looks at disasters holistically, it looks at them multidisciplinary. So we look at not just the fire department, we we'll also look at how they interact with police, how they interact with EMS, how emergency managers play a role in it, including the private sector as well. So the center has done a lot of work over the last several years studying all sorts of different kinds of incidents across our country. Um, and basically the bottom line is that we generate reports um, that other agencies, uh, response agencies actually can read and study and learn from. We also apply these same lessons to the students in our classrooms. Um, of course, John Jay is a place where future leaders of the police and fire departments very often will find themselves. And so we hope that the lessons we provide to our students can be applied to the future responses that these young folks will have to deal with going forward in the, in the, again in the future. Um, we've, been, we've been fortunate to have a really critical mass of, of, um, of faculty and students who have, have made this Reagan Hard mission a success. Um, and one of the folks that helped us along the way was a man by the name of James Boyle, Jimmy Boyle, who for some of the folks who are watching this video remember Jimmy Boyle from the days of his work at the Fire Science Institute at John Jay College. Jimmy was a longtime FDNY firefighter, uh, who's also president of the Uniform Fire, Office, excuse me, Uniform Firefighters Association. Uh, but most notably, he unfortunately, as along with Sally, lost a son, Michael, uh, also on 9-11. And he f also felt that the Reagan Heart Center would do good work for the memory of all the firefighters and emergency responders that were killed that day. We know that in the wake of 9-11, that many folks, many p uh, responders that were there, the immediate aftermath, the, the months that it took to recover, uh, the human remains from ground zero, uh, that many of those individuals have become sick um, and they have unfortunately in a lot of cases succumbed to their injuries. Um, back uh, several years ago at John Jay, uh, we dedicated a plaque on the 15th anniversary of the attacks uh, for the responders who have succumbed to their injuries um, since 9-11. Uh, because of their work at Ground Zero after the collapse of the Twin Towers. Um, those folks um, deserve, of course, deserve recognition, and we've tried to do that at John Jay uh, College. In the uh, virtual screen behind me, you see our memorial uh, that we dedicated uh, for the victims of 9-11, the victims who perished that day in 2001, but also we recognize the individuals who passed on since 9-11-2001 because of the um, illnesses that they uh, succumbed to over the years. Um, it's also important to note that that memorial uh, behind me uh, also rep has the names of every uh, individual student or faculty member of John Jay that was killed that day on, in September of 2001. Um, that memorial contains the names of, of, of people uh, more than any other college in America that lost 
alumni, students, and faculty on that day. And so it's a special place for many of us at the college to pass by, to memorialize the um, friends and family that were killed that day, to remember them. Uh, and it's an important reminder to our current students of why they're studying the things they're studying at John Jay College. It's our hope that through entities like the Reagan Heart Center, as well as this memorial, that the legacy of the lives of the people that were killed on 9-11, as well as the people that were, uh, that again, f uh, fell because of their, uh, their illnesses that they gained, unfortunately gained in the wake of 9-11, that they'll be remembered and um, that they will not be forgotten. Procession in the Clouds in Three Ways by P.J. Gibson. Wave One. It was a day of infamy. Everyone had a story linked to pain, hurt, and disbelief. Cameras caught the unbelievable. Eyes consumed a meal no one wanted to eat. She had been among those who stood before windows, rooftops, sidewalks, any platform upon which feet could plant, seeing what would forever scar the mind. Her ears flanked by sirens, never ending shrieks, her camera click, click, clicking the moment of the second fall. Paper wore images developed in drugstores and photo shops. Posterity frozen by the hands of the novice, the expert, and her. Duplicating this angle and that angle. Images, images, images spreading themselves across cover stories of magazines, newspapers, hideous dragon faces hidden in the dust smoke, the dead. A neighbor first saw them, her developed images, grotesque dragon faces camouflaged in the rising ash and soot. Consorted figures of evil akin to ancient horror creatures of the past. They, came, they claimed the images dominated the photo paper drew in the spectator's eye to see, see them. A neighbor was the first to see them, then a friend and another, all seeing what the camera had caught. Horrific, contorted faces of creatures, open mouths and wolfing in souls. There in the billowing veil of the rising smoke and the plume of the taken. These beasts, they had no shame in the feast of souls. Gazing upon the photos, one could not but hurt seeing the dragons, creatures, the unbelievable, the unimaginable, gloating as they fed. Her photos? She now keeps them in a small decorative box, defying the darkness inside. It is a coffin for those who had no burial. A box bearing a design of tranquility. It is dressed in a garment of soothing yellow, warm shades of lavender and gold, a mandala of intricate design centers its lid like a like a sun and gentle twirling leaves of green lace pink roses and sunflowers framed by delicate russet twigs life and nature riding around the box's sides cardinal points of calm only on the anniversary only on September 11, does she take box in hand and permit her eyes to peruse the images, meditate on them. And then when the ceremonial clock closes, 
she returns the photos to their serene home where there is no joy in this ritual, simply respect and history. Architects vied for the honor of the rebuild. A new symbol of strength. No one footprint to alter what was once two. Perhaps that is why they came. Wave two. There are things the camera lens should not lasso, profit from, lead to casual discourse. Wave three. Standing before her window, staring down at that which had been, an icon of the city eaten by flame and smoke. On this anniversary date, 11 in September, the movement of the clouds caught her eyes. They moved from east to west, odd, she thought. Their movement from east to west. And then she saw, high in the puff of the white cloud, there in the calm of the clear blue sky, a procession of people, 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 they were cloud souls, people in shapes of women and men, short and tall, fat and thin. They moved as currents of clouds a conveyor belt of people's shapes high above the mangled soil beneath. Did they know the shift to come? Had they in the heavens ethers read the headlines? Architects to alter. Is that which had drawn them, summoned them, one last chance to peruse? There they were, there high in the sky, a procession of souls marching above a massive pole, a solemn saunter over where they had once been. They traveled, passing over the familiar now gone soul people, mirroring a New Orleans funeral stroll. There they were hovering. She she dare not swoop up camera as she once had. She dare not click the lens, dare not defy all this glide in the sky. These were souls of the dead taking their last look. Collectively, they had claimed the clouds with their bodies. And in a solemn march they viewed below one last time, lowering their heads to see. Their processional was welcomed by the morning sky and sun. They had been given a beautiful day for their final assembly. Others, those with cameras and such, others in the city, they must also have seen this processional, but no photographer sold the images. No photo of them crossing over made the headlines, the news, nor discourse in local bars, but others must have seen. Perhaps it was respect, respect that conquered the moment. Just as on cue, mirroring the hands of the clock, the moment the second tower fell, the processional began to dissipate, fade away. The last of them had seen, then dissolved into the clear of the blue sky, passing into the ethers. Someone had seen them. 
She alone could not have been the only to see. Someone else must have stood at windows, on balconies, in parks, on streets, in cars, on roofs, at bus stops. Others had to have seen the procession. And like her, they had pursed their lips for respect. Today, today there stands one where there was once two. Things have altered the familiar. The souls had come that September 11, and they had seen, and they had said, farewell. She had seen their procession, and she honored them by not clicking her camera's lens. Hello, I'm Michael Martinez Sachs, Dean of Students and Assistant Vice President at John Jay College of Criminal Justice. John Jay College cherishes its many relationships with external partners including public and community-based agencies, donors, and others. They are part of the fabric of our college community. Dozens of these partnerships result in enriching opportunities and benefits for our students, the school, and the community at large. We are proud of our long-honored relationships with first responders, homeland security, and intelligence agencies and volunteer service organizations building academic and leadership programs, informing their practices through research, positioning interns for professional and experiential learning opportunities, and serving as a unique pipeline for future leaders. We take great pride in the success of our in-service and retired alumni and owe a great debt of gratitude to our military service members who sprang into action assisting the New York Police Department and the Fire Department of New York with search, rescue, and recovery efforts, addressing threats at home and abroad, and continuing to work tirelessly around the world to protect us from harm. We also salute philanthropists, numerous volunteers, and civic leaders who tended to those in need, supported supervisors, and helped reshape a city. Some of these leaders are members of our foundation board. As we hear from a board member, alumni, and some external partners, let us stand united in our resolve to honor all 9-11 heroes by fighting against injustice and for equality. Thank you. As a John Jay alum and a member of the Foundation Board of Directors, and someone who started a business here in New York City, I know the special role that John Jay has played in shaping this city. John Jay is more than a college, it's a, a community of special people who see justice as a moral pursuit. Nineteen years ago, John Jay's community was forever altered. We lost 67 members on 9-11, with many more following because of illnesses related to that horrific event. Those we lost that day were members of our John Jay family. John Jay has responded to a challenge the only way we know how, with honesty, with valor, and with a sense of purpose, as the heroes who gave all that day exhibited. From these terrible tragedies that cause us pain and immeasurable grief, the aftershocks, while mostly negative, can bring about positive too. Organizations like Tuesday's Children and the Tunnel to Towers Foundation are excellent examples of how to preserve the legacy of those lost that day with good work that benefits those they left behind. Today, there are different challenges that our community is facing. Questions about policing, the criminal justice system, and the reforms that people are calling for. In this atmosphere, the John Jay community is once again called upon to lead, convene, and be the honest broker in a very important dialogue that will shape our future. It is our time, it is our opportunity, and I would suggest it is our responsibility to serve with honesty, with a clear sense of purpose, to do as our forebearers would do, to help our communities heal. As the first Deputy Commissioner 
of the NYPD and proud John Jay alumnus. I'm honored to represent the department and to offer reflections on this solemn occasion. This ceremony represents an enduring tribute to four NYPD officers, along with other John Jay alumni who died on that fateful day 19 years ago, as well as the hundreds of others we've lost as a result of 9-11 related illnesses. This ceremony honors the college's promise to never forget its fallen heroes who paid the ultimate sacrifice. To the current student body, you carry on their legacy through your scholarship, dedication to justice, and acts of kindness. You honor the generations that preceded you and the lives lost but never forgotten. On September 11, 2001, New York City was attacked. Washington, D.C. was attacked. And in Shanksville, Pennsylvania, brave Americans fought back and lost their lives. In New York City, the members of the FDMY, along with members of the NYPD, and first responders from many agencies executed the largest rescue and recovery operation ever on U.S. soil. 343 FDMY members gave their lives courageously working to save others. The department suffered extreme loss. So too did John Jay College. Since then, more than 200 additional FDMY members have died of illnesses related to their brave work at the World Trade Center site, and the number continues to grow. Today, on behalf of every FDMY member, I pay tribute to all my colleagues who have passed. In recognition of the great sacrifices so many first responders made on that day and in the 19 years since. We will never forget them. May their spirit and dedication to public service and safety continue to shine and inspire the next generations of first responders. Our first responders and their families paid a heavy price because of September 11. As a community, we will continue to applaud their service and draw from their memory and their bravery. Thank you for joining us today. Oh, mm -hmm.
save the swallow and breeze will lead me Oh.